Uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm glad to welcome you to the February 14th life lesson of uh, Module 3 yeah, of this institute. I'd like to congratulate you all for the excellent uh, participation that you have all uh, been engaged with in the course. Uh, today is uh, going to be really, really exciting. Exciting because we're going to be looking at challenges facing directors of academic planning or the directorate of academic planning. And uh, what are the things we can do to pull down these barriers? Uh, we're going to be listening to uh, two very seasoned directors of academic planning. They are going to tell us generic, but more importantly, I want them to tell us from their experience. So it's not something that will be idealistic or theoretical. They have to give us some examples from their practice. Our program for today is what you can see on the screen. I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Vivian Ilaku of the National Poor University of Nigeria to call us to order, and then I'll give some remarks, and then we'll go flow with this program. That said, the meeting is starting with Dr. Vivian Ilaku calling us to order. Over to you, Dr. Vivian uh, Ilaku. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, participants. My name is Ayla Vivian, and I'm your host for today. And I welcome you all to the conceptual track of VPEC. I would like to formally introduce our facilitator general, distinguished professor Peter Okebukola. We also have in our midst a big personality, whom I would also like to introduce, Her Excellency Professor Sarah Abo the immediate past Honorable Commissioner for Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation of the African Union Commission, Addis Ababa. Fortunately, she has agreed to honor our invitation, and she's our chairperson for today. Our topic, just like our facilitator general had said, is overcoming challenges to academic planning in the university system. And our presenters are Professor Ngozi Odo and Professor Bolanle Akinwande. As I hand over to our facilitator general, Professor K. Bukola, I urge everyone to sit tight and enjoy the presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much, our great host, Dr. Ugona Ailaku uh, Vivian. Vi no. Uh, Vivian Ugona Ailaku for that warm welcome to all of us. I no, joined I her say. by way of my opening remarks uh, to thank, thank you all you. for you know uh, being part of this event, this uh, training program. Uh, we're in the week where we continue to look at the obstacles um, facing uh, directorate of academic planning in our universities across Africa. And uh, I know that we have two very seasoned academic planners, directors of academic planning uh, with us. So I have the pleasure uh, of welcoming them, especially that is also joining uh, Dr. Elaku to welcome them. Uh, I, so let me have the pleasure of inviting Professor Bolanli Akimwande because I cannot see Professor Sarah uh, sorry, uh, uh, Ngozi Odu uh, online. So, Professor Akiwande, you have the floor for uh, 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Can you see my Yes. All right, sir. So, I have just by way of outline these three points talk about, especially the last two. The structure of academic planning the last two weeks, especially by Dr. Sadi. So I just brought this organogram to remind us of the position of the academic planning unit in the university system. It relates directly to the vice chancellor and the core of the presentation, the challenges. What are those things that uh, the especially directors of academic planning are facing that actually demand they are great mental and physical efforts before they will succeed in the position that they occupy. So the first one, 
is the competency of the director of academic planning. Um, as we know, many of the directors of academic planning are professors, which means they are coming from the academic side. And what actually they know is the, the, is the, is the profession that they are in, but the nitty gritty of what the academic planning unit is about, most times is always not known. Talkless of knowing how to go about doing activities. So this one is always a serious one for anybody that is coming up as the director of academic, academic planning because it is a strange environment. The next is the lack of provision of enabling environment to function effectively. The National Universities Commission expects the unit to play some certain roles on their behalf to sanitize the system. But at the institutional level, the unit is always not in the position to do all that it should be done. And I will say this in the area of four things for now. In the area of budget planning, there is no involvement in all, all the cases. In the area of expansion of physical structures, the unit is always not carried along, talk less of advising them appropriately. There is, as we all know, institutions, excessive enrollment because the unit is not involved in the, during the process of admission. And also for staff recruitment, to have com very competent hands in the system involves that the appointment is based on merit. And I think this could still be done better when the unit is involved in the course of appointment of staff. You have then, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes, is, 10 more minutes. minutes. All right, sir. Okay, the, the, there is always delay in release of funds for travel and several activities. Most times, the director has to use personal funds to do all this and refurbishment and getting paid back could be an issue. At times, it has to place to two, three before one can get it. And also short notice short time notice of assignment. It's difficult in most cases to have a definite itinerary. It can be changed anytime. So we also have lack delay in responses from academic staff on timely activities. There are times there will be questions from AUC that the academic staff should provide some information. The academics don't respond. If at all they do, it takes a lot of time. And also the issue of having everyone on Google Scholar presence. Everybody here would agree with me that not all universities have all academic staff on Google Scholar. There is always resistance to resistance and refusal to comply with academic demands. Most times we have cause to have AUC teams for resource verification accreditation. There are always process, there are always procedures, but while trying to prepare and advising the faculties and departments on what needs to be done, at times there is um, um, refusal, resistance. They don't agree, but one doesn't give up but still try to ensure that they do the natural thing, the ideal thing, sorry. There is also a traditional way syndrome. This is the way we've been doing it for ages. Do you just come and you are telling us, oh, no, no, but this traditional thing they say they do is normal. In most times, it's not the ideal. Now make them change the, the, the tradition to the, to the normal. It's a lot of, could be an equivalent task, but definitely it has to still be done. As I said before, the academic uh, the planning unit is most times not involved when there has to be supply of equipment and consumables, and at times non-functional um, supplies of that are of no standard or low or no standard at all are delivered. Political factors, there could be undue influence by the leadership when there are calls for nominations by the university. When this happens, the ideal thing is to throw it open for all, like, for all uh, staff to apply and make selection on merit. But at times, it could be such that the leadership would have interest and may want to impose on the unit. Also, I heard this undue influence of power that's be that I term superpowers. It's also in relation to the, uh, the traditional way we've been doing it time. There is additional administrative responsibilities for the directors. As I said, the director, if professor, has demanding academic activities but getting to this position also requires a lot of administrative responsibilities a great one is how do i manage this to and still succeed another important one is the 
data is, is being established. The INUC is always demanding for data from the, from the universities, especially through academic planning units. Getting the data from different units like academic affairs schools, graduate schools, for, for information for enrollment and graduation number, for reg from registry statistics of, of staff and bursary grants, as well as from library on holdings and currency would be a great, a great one. And one would have, in most cases, need to rely or be at the mercy of those that have to give out the information. And at times, if it comes in some, at some times, it will be late. And at times, one may be unfortunate or not to have anything at all. Yes, the solution now. There is a saying that says to every problem, there is definitely a solution. Solution is a means of dealing with a supposed to be difficult situation. And the first one I will talk about is that it is very, very important to appoint a dignified personality as the director of academic planning. Do I mean such person should be worthy of character, respect, and honor? Because whoever would have to want to give guidance must be somebody that is trusted, that is respected. So when these characters are lacking in the personality of the director of academic planning, there might not be opportunity to record a lot of success. Another one is that such directors of academic planning need to think of being trained and retrained, such as the one we're going through now. We give gratitude, uh, uh, gratitude to our facilitator general, Professor Kebukola, for giving us this privilege. All directors of academic planning need to be informed of the details of the demands in the unit or in the academic planning unit. And also, it is also very important to enforce quality control in all academic activities in a very subtle manner. There will always be resistance. There will always be unwillingness to take instructions, to take the advice. But in however manner, such has to be done in a subtle manner, such because there is no program that must fail, be it resource verification, accreditation, reaccreditation, in spite of the fact that they are not willing to listen. They still want to pass. So the Great challenge is now on the directorate of the academic plan to ensure that what needs to be done is done for success. Four minutes more. The director Four of academic more. plan must, okay, must uh, definitely may maintain a cordial relationship with all stakeholders. Whenever there is resistance or whenever there are disagreements, it must be resolved immediately such that relationship is cordial with all the stakeholders for success. And importantly, the director of academic, academic planning must embrace a Boy Scout mode of be prepared. Not that, and I did not know I would have to do this assignment. One should know that assignment can come at any time. And the director must also play advocacy roles by, solicit, by getting public support for a particular course all the time. It is because many people don't know the implication of what they do. So the director of academic planning should be able to make explanations and give information. There should be a diplomatic, uh, the director of academic planning must be very diplomatic in managing people, making sure they do the need, for it, though it is challenging, but it is possible. And from my experience, as was said, I've been able to record a lot of success in this regard. For uh, the, In the course of selection, it is important that one is very fair and comply with due process to have the, um, whoever may, may meet up with the, whoever has the merit to be selected for it. And because of enormous uh, ad administrative rules, from my experience again, I've been able to share the bit of academic responsibilities until the time I leave that office, such that I will be able to accommodate all the demands of the administrative responsibilities. And in conclusion, I would end this presentation with a saying that says, while challenges may not have a correct solution, definitely they do have a best solution. And whoever does not believe that every problem can be solved would never try hard to solve it. And on that note, I say thank you all for listening to my presentation. Thank you so very much. Uh, uh, that's very wonderful. We appreciate uh, all that has gone into this presentation she picked out the challenges and then she provided some solutions you know i said some 
because there were some challenges that you raised and i was looking forward to how you will offer the solutions you say people do not respond quickly to collect data this day you didn't what i would have loved to see would have been like a chat towards the end challenges solutions ch ch a challenge solutions challenge solutions so you missed out uh, quite a few there but i tell you this has been a very enriching presentation so we're going to open the floor thank you, for thank you ma'am for contributions because uh, the two hands are up i will ask you to unmute yourself uh, what you're going to do is this you know what the rules are like you're going to show your activate your video and i'll call you and please we are all very senior people vice chancellors just academic planning give us your own uh, give us a challenge and how you'll be able to solve it that's how we're going to enrich this session not a question of your asking question again on professor bolanley akin day's uh, uh, presentation you can do that but the value you're going to add is to say oh she mentioned this matter of the registry not uh, reacting expeditiously to data from NUC, required from NUC, or the faculty is not responding uh, quickly. This is how I did it. So that's the kind of contribution that we want. And uh, the floor is now open. We'll begin with uh, Professor Adelodu Kolakpo. And that is followed by Dr. Ibrahim Yahuza. I've unmuted the two of them. So take the floor, sir. Okay, Dr. Ibrahim Yahuza, Kolakpo well, is not responding. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, yes. Facilitator General, for this opportunity. Yes. Uh, and then thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Presenter, for this uh, insightful presentation. Yes, as mentioned by the Facilitator General, actually one of the you know challenges we are facing is the uh, you know uh, staff not forwarding the required document as requested. So what I will advise is uh, the procedure we adopted here in the Air Force Institute of Technology. Very you good. know, um, uh, we, we, we have a timeline. You use drones. We, you use drones. Use drones to go and catch and collect the data. <laughs> so, so, so actually, uh, we, 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 we may need you to visit us, sir. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I, yes, I want to have a, a forum, different forum to officially request you to come to Africa. My commandant, of course, will be by very happy in receiving you, sir. If by you can give me, I will email you, sir. This one, by the way. Yes. Yes. So we, we have a timeline. The staff under my directorate, I used to give them, you know, a, a timeline for receiving data that I requested from departments. So any staff that failed to, you know, um, uh, provide that data within that stipulated time, first he has to answer, you know, query. He has to answer it in writing. And then I have a habit of filing those queries in their files, yes. which of course they are up and doing now. Very so the good. moment we send a circular and then we attach that desk officers in the faculties yes. before the dead before the deadlines are you know, all the data are in in my directory. This is the you. method. Wonderful. I we can we are learning yes. from you, sir. And the next step yes, thank will, you. will be for you to court martial them. Court martial. You know, that's a military place. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Just joking. Yes. So now, I, I have to bridge the, uh, the, the sequence. You okay, to to okay sir, thank you, sir. I have to bridge the sequence now because I can see Professor Ibn Kafuakwe uh, and Professor Smaranda. Right? These are senior citizens that uh, we have to, when they raise their hands, you know, they have to come first. So, uh, Professor Ibn Kafuakwe, you have to activate your video. That's Vice Chancellor of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University. And we have Professor Elizabeth Smaranda Olaringi, who is the Vice Chancellor Abuad. So the VCs, you have priority all the time. You are our senior citizens. So uh, we would like you to tell us uh, the solutions. We're looking at, we don't want to begin listing challenges now. Good to list them. But we want to hear from you, our vice chancellors, how you've supported your DAPs to demolish some challenges. So you just mentioned a challenge and how you've been able to. Professor, uh, Professor Fakwe, you have the floor. And uh, Professor uh, Olarinde, you take over from there. Yeah, thank you very much, Facilitator General and other participants. Uh, um, the challenge I want to address um, from the lectures we've been receiving, yes. we find that the Director of Academic Planning has a huge, huge. Uh, workload. Sure. So my solution to that is that the Director should have some different committees mm -hmm. headed by people like him who are energetic, who are ICT compliant, 
and who are results oriented and driven mm -hmm. so that each of these leaders will now re respond to him and then they can get a lot of work done in the quickest time frame. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. But before Professor Olaridi comes up, what she has just said, you know, uh, will lead us as, as, a, as a mojo, as this cohort, to make a representation or to have at the end of this our training a propose to propose a configuration for a directorate of academic planning. In some of the presentations that we had earlier, uh, I think by Oshasson, I found that they were quoting Ali. Atune Ali, my friend, who was DAP of UNN, almost like 25 years ago, they were quoting the structure that is in the literature. But things have changed. So what I think we need to do, and Professor Ibinka Fakwe and our VC, Professor Olarinde, I'm going to put you as chair of the committee, of our committee. What you want to do, and, and the, the, uh, the chair of uh, the Committee of Directors for Academic Planning of Nigeria Universities, uh, Kodaknu, to be part of that, that team. We want to recalibrate the whole thing. The DAP of the 2000s, uh, of 1990 something, is different from the DAP now. So we want, at the end of this, to be able to present to Professor Sariu and then you see, this is what we think should be the new the configuration of the Director of Academic Planning based on what Professor Sadio told us about the functions, what uh, Osasana told us about the duties, and all the others. So we then propose a generic one. That's not to say that everybody in the Nigerian university system or university system in Africa should use that. But let's, let's have a generic thing. It's just like you're saying, you have the vice chancellor, deputy vice chancellor, deans of faculties, and all that. So that will be a major contribution of this group to the system, the African system. Professor Ali, what do you think? Brilliant. Brilliant. It's, it's here, it's here. I mean, you see, I mean, Abuja have been located. Uh, we're having a meeting here. So it's here. So we have to get a new organogram. We have to prepare, prepare a new organogram that will propose to the, uh, propose to the, uh, to the African higher education system for directors of academic planning based on their functions. And then we'll then suggest committees. You know, Professor Bianca for I said some committees, committees that will be, 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 be in charge of the of uh, of uh, you know fighting the professors to bring out the data. Committees, <laughs> I'm joking. So that, that's uh, very important. Uh Professor Miranda you're on the floor. Thank you very much. Thank I will you, apologize. Most of the time I will not. I could not hear, I think there was a network failure. Sorry. However, the question is very clear, solutions. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, the academic planning and the vice chancellor are the management, academic managers and academic leaders in the university. Henceforth, there must be a synergy, a perfect synergy between the vice chancellor and the academic planning. This means that it could go to the extent that visits with where the vice chancellor is physically in, uh, engaged to the colleges, in our case, colleges, to see the during the mock accreditation, how far synergy that on daily basics, basis, the um, digital data made available to the academic planning be made available to the vice chancellor. So at the press of a button, we know exactly where the, uh, where the problems and the solutions or if the data is, is a, 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 a credible data or otherwise. Again, it is very important that the academic plan, planning trains the heads of the university, the heads of the, uh, the faculties, the provosts, the deans in the data collection, in the data analysis, in the data in accreditation. It's not just before accreditation, it is a fire brigade approach. It is an all 
ongoing synergy between the director of academic planning, right, the director of ICT, yes, okay. ICT, and the vice chancellor. Thank you. Thank it you so safe. very much, uh, vice chancellor. Thank you, Thank, Thank you, you Thank you very sir. much. Yes, we take uh, a did lodu kolakpo. Uh, please unmute if you are not if you are not unmuting quickly. I will then take on Dr. Chioma Chigoze. Uh, yes. So I have unmuted. Yes, please go on, sir. Go on, sir. Go on, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, what can I you introduce yourself? To tell us the DAP or work. Tell us your institutional affiliation. What do you do there, if you don't mind? Oh, okay. I'm Adelo Dokolako. I'm from Augusta University. As in what? Lara, in Lagos. As and what? I'm the head of the research management unit. Very good. So, uh, on the issue, I wanted to raise the issue of uh, the ICT compliance uh, skill personnel. That would be a very good way to really address the challenges of uh, lateness or lack of readiness of the faculty member to supply data. In, for example, in the 2021 ranking that was done by the NGC. So at the eve of the day that there's data they were due, uh, you know, some of the members of staff in my institute, they are also, you know, that kind of delay. So where we have to, uh, we swung into actions by even going, I uh, mean, solving that problem ourselves, you know, together with all the other IT, ICT compliant uh, persons. So we're able to get those data, even when they were not even ready to, because talking about their global scholar index, age index, IT index, they are all out there. We just solve that problem ourselves. So if the, 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 the staff or the personnel in the academic planning directory, they are highly ICT compliant with the current trends, there will be a way to solve such Thank you so problem. very much, sir. That's Professor. number one. No, no, that's fine. That's fine, sir. We're going to move on to Dr. Chioma Chigoze. Yes, ma'am, uh, take the floor. Okay. Um. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, unfortunately, we'll not be able to take you yeah. in a vehicle, and it, and it's not going to work. It's not going to work this time. Sorry, madam. Oh, yes, uh, I've been alerted by Professor Biodusali that Professor Ngozi Udu is in the room. Uh, so we'll give her 12 minutes towards the end of this contribution. Uh, madam, you know our rules. I mean, I, I will search for you at the beginning. So we're going on to Professor, uh, let's see now, Chi. Boise Obona. After that, Lawa uh, Yakini or Lawa, please take the floor, sir. I'll make it brief. Thank you, sir. First, the general. I was struck by the presenter's reference to uh, having a personal board, person as the director of academic planning. And I was just wondering if uh, personality is sufficient. Beyond that, uh, I'm wondering, is it not possible to deliberately create a career path for academic planning that we can do by periodically instituting training such as the one you are coordinating yes. in the universities yes. so. generally so that the faculty and staff who may be interested or who may not even be interested will go through this training, acquire some things, and when it's time to appoint directors, exactly. we can pick from that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, let me tell you what we're going to do from now on. Uh, I'm going to give Professor Ngozi Odu 10 minutes sharp, and that will take us to 1042, and then I'm going to take the following people, uh, Professor Lawa, Professor Sharif, in the other, they raise their hand, Professor Shetima, Abdul Kadir. Uh, let me see. There's somebody called Academic Planning. I can't take you, but I don't know what Academic Planning is. Uh, Professor Shew Ado, uh, Professor Bajogu, Professor Chinedu, that's VC, VC Chrysler, Chinedu Mbabalola, uh, Professor Mary Silva, and uh, let's see who else. Uh, I think that will be it for now. I'm sorry, the others, there are about three others, but the time available cannot allow us to take it because by three o'clock, we're going to stop the session. So, uh, Professor uh, Ngozi Odu, please uh, take the floor and uh, you have 10 minutes. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Professor Ngozi Odo. I'm Director of Academic Planning uh, of Pamo University of Medical Sciences. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now uh, so that I can talk with us quickly. But, uh, briefly, uh, academic planning, especially in the universities, presents a more complex platform in that it is not just planning for a few stakeholders, but we are, are planning for all sectors within the university. The, let me quickly recap on some challenges, uh, just in the bullet form, inadequate funding, inadequate working materials, lack of cooperation from departments, poor capacity development programs, poor motivation, and poor communication. These are some of the um, challenges we do face. By coming to the crux of today's uh, discussion, overcoming challenges of academic planning, uh, the above identified uh, problems. Uh, sorry, ma'am. We're uh, only talking. seeing your your opening slide. We're only seeing your first. Slide. Oh, just seeing only my opening slide. What happened? Yeah. Okay. Please just okay. go quickly. You have eight more minutes. I'm not seeing it. You know, I've taken it off. Just uh, you you can use from. Oh, me. okay. So what? what Um, we said increase in funding as part of the overcoming the challenges, increase in funding of academic planning units, cooperation of units of the university, effective staff development, proper inter and intra communication with other units of the university, and improved staff welfare. So for I pick a cooperation of the units as number one. Uh, I have a slide that is here that says, together everyone achieves more. That is teamwork. We advocate for teamwork uh, in, in relations with the units, the departments, and other directorates. Sometimes when memos are sent to units, it takes like forever for you to get a feedback or a response, or even from the departments. Sometimes they don't put your request as, a, as on the front burner, and that can be very frustrating for us at the academic end. And then responding to, to memos and data, you find out that it's a bit untidy and it can come in uh, fairly late. Then we talk about increase in funding of the academic uh, planning units. The increase uh, budgetary allocation by management for academic planning will enable them effect, um, carry on effectively their programs within the university. Like sometimes you may need to uh, either print out some documents to send to other departments, and you find out that you don't have the work all with all to be able to get it done and on time. Uh, you need to make some uh, budgetary provisions for either things that will make you work more effectively within the department, and at the budgetary end, it wasn't provided for. It becomes a problem when they're carrying out uh, budget implementation. You find out that um, every other person goes ahead of you. The government should also know, the university should also increase the funding. The government should increase the funding of universities to enable them to uh, provide adequate infrastructural facilities um, for the department and other departments. We we'll talk about effective capacity development. Here we're talking about most DAPs, like uh, the lady that spoke before being mentioned, most DAPs are coming from various uh, academic disciplines and from various backgrounds. It is important uh, that the DAPs are trained on the mechanisms, like the type of training you're having now, uh, the, on the mechanisms and how to uh, carry out all the numerous functions that we have. But people are posted to the director of academic planning just for two years, and while they are learning, they're almost on their way out. But if we are trained, we'll become more efficient and more result-oriented. Uh, that is for the senior cadre, but for the other officers within the department, they need a frequent training of trainers. Uh, quite a number of them, especially in in some younger universities, they are all green hands. Because they are green hands, they need to be taught on the rudiments of uh, academic planning and what needs to be done. When that is done, it will update their methods 
approaches their skills and knowledge of what to do within the department. Two minutes more. Proper inter and intra, oh, proper inter and intra communications. Uh, we need the, the uh, people in the academic directorate to be ICT compliant for effective information. This structure that is so built for it, purpose built for it, and that will help to make uh, uh, the, to improve efficiency within the, the department. Provision of adequate working uh, facilities. I mentioned that earlier. The conducive environment. It should be comfortable. Uh, you have the normal stationaries and all that made available. Then staff motivation. If you have staff that are not motivated, their outputs are usually uh, affected. So the, sometimes they, are, they have to do work for a very long time. Over time, might not be paid, but there should be some allowance, some overtime allowance or something that compensates them to make them feel that they are appreciated in the efforts they are putting in, in generating the data for the entire university. I want to thank us very much indeed. I'm sorry that the slide wasn't showing you, but thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank, you, thank you so very much, Professor Ngozi Odu, for the uh, well-researched and uh, practical uh, uh, presentation that read practical experiences that you have in PAMO. Uh, yes, uh, we'll continue with the contributions from I won't say the floor because there's no floor. I can't see floor in any virtual in any virtual space here. So we're going to take uh, the Professor Lawa. I'm, I'm unmuting you. Uh, make it very brief. And the Professor Shetima Abdukado. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Any of you that's able to unmute himself, let's go. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir. Professor Ilawa. Uh, Abdukino, you? General. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yeah, what we do is we have a committee that is made up of representatives of the bursary, okay. the registry, the ICT. Yeah. And at the end of the session, we have a meeting, a committee meeting, where we collect data about all the activities of the university in preparation and presentation at the beginning of the second session. Mm. And at the beginning of every session, we send circular out, call letters, we call it, mm. informing all the programs of uh, programs that are due for accreditation. So at no time do we have problem collecting data. Wow. So there's no emergency collection of data. Here. Wonderful. Good so experience. Good experience. Thank you, sir. Moving on to Professor Shetima Dukadir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. My name is. Yes, sir. My name is Professor Shetima Bibadi, the Vice Chancellor and Administration for the Belgian University of Nigeria. My text, yes. Professor Professor Ngozi has already hit the nail in the head when she talked about the need for input of technology into the uh, Directorate of Academic Planning. Hmm. That's what we are trying to interact with you and all others because of that level of technology. So I think since the department is the injury room as far as the university is concerned for it to operate effectively, I think we should start by ensuring that technology is properly taken care of. Exactly. Specifically the MIS. Specifically the MIS. Because that is the center where information is for our uh, data is collected Correct. and disseminated and maybe transformation okay thank you professor shetima abdukadur you okay, have underlined yeah. the fact that the mis yeah you see if you have a strong mis just like you said all this one you are looking for data don't go up i mean data will quickly be generated from the mis uh, place so thank you so very much professor Shu g ado take the floor after that uh, if you go beyond my one minute, I'll just mute you. Everybody that's speaking from now on. Yes, sir. Professor, you have to tell us. Uh, Thank about you very much. Institutional affiliation. Where are you, sir? And uh, what's your role? I am now a visiting professor with the National University Commission. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. I was the former vice chancellor at Kalem University, Kasina. Wow. My contributions on the issue. Of, my contribution, sir, is on the issue of delayed payments yes. to the directorate. In my institution, we provide reasonable overhead mm -hmm. to the directorate. 
Mm. And any approved expenditure, not only for from the director, but from the university, mm. is paid within three working days. Wow. So since it is bank transfers, we don't generally deal with the cash at hand. Very good. So it is very easy, and we have found ourselves very smooth. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, former VC, Emeritus VC, Al-Kalab University, Katsina. And uh, <laughs> I mean, your place now, I don't know where you are, but it is NUC, uh, uh, we're having uh, a, 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 a meeting with our guy. He's just inaugurated the National uh, University Ranking Advisory Committee. So today is a happy day for all of us. Thank you, sir. So we'll go on to Prodon Gozika Bajogu. You have the floor, ma. Yeah. Okay, if you are not ready, we'll take up Prodon Chine I am ready, sir. Yeah, so Good afternoon, on. sir. Yeah, good afternoon, ma'am. Yes. Okay. I will still speak on data. Yes. And quickly, uh, just like my colleagues have said, digitalization has made everything much easier. Sure. But I have three uh, solutions. Good. One. The DAP should streamline activities. When I was DAP, I uh, our data. Can you and tell us where you are? Public. Introduce yourself more, ma. All right, um, Professor Nkosi Kambajogo, DAP, uh, ASUT 2015 to 2020. Good. Okay. So um, we are uh, August was our statistics month. By August, we produce we produce the data. Hmm. Produce it find it and send to different units. Mm. And not just data, you don't stop at data, you go on to trends and patterns mm. so that when they see what is going on, mm. they, nobody is going to, you know, when you show evidence, everybody will actually rally around evidence. But if you just have data that they can't make meaning and sense at all, you find that they find it difficult to comply and to actually cooperate with you. Secondly, we also um, have, uh, you, we should build very strong databases in our units, in our DAP units. If you have a strong database, you'll find that every year you're updating the data. You're not getting fresh data. I think what, one of the problems is that every year people go out there to collect data rather than just get a few data to update. And then the, the, the third thing, again, is that we, uh, there was an interface between our database in the, in, in the directorate and ICT. Thank you very so much, ma'am. Thank you, I've muted you. Professor Chinedun Babalola, you have the floor. We can't give you the floor until you show your video. That's one rule here. And then the last but not the least, Professor, okay, fine. Professor, yes, uh, take the floor, ma'am. VC, that's Professor Chinedun Babalola, Vice Chancellor, Chris Land University. Take the floor. Thank you very much. Um, one minute. Yes, um, thank you, sir. What we what I did is to identify a non-academic staff who is very good and efficient uh, with um, keeping data and who knows much about uh, a lot of noise from your environment, madam. We're going to ask you. We're going to come back to you. There's a lot of noise from your environment. So I'll go to Professor Ojoni Go Friday at uh, except you can make the noise from your environment go down a little bit. It's uh, interrupting my recording. I'm meeting you now. Yeah, so probably uh, Johnny Go Friday. I see you on the floor. Yeah, we can't see you though. We can't see you. We can't see you. <laughs> Sorry, Professor Friday, uh, Jerry, your, 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 your voice is not coming out well. I think because you are in the vehicle, uh, it's not going to work. Yeah, I'm so sorry, I have to mute you. I've muted you. Uh, Professor Chiedu are you able to come on now, ma'am? Um, is, are you still hearing noise? Uh, no, it's better, ma'am. It's better. So you have uh, 30 minutes. All right. Thank you very much. So what I, what I did to solve problem of uh, transition, being a young university, because you might have a DAP that is on a sabbatical for one year, the next time you have it, have another DAP, is to have, Yo, that's hungry. have a very strong non-academic staff who is able to keep information and transmit information 
and that has helped with uh, transition from one DAP to another. Wonderful. And that's what he does full time, so. and that has helped. Secondly, is to identify the PAR who we just employed and very good with um, ICT and data analysis. Actually, that's what helped us at the last time we, we asked for data for the ranking. Wonderful. Within a short time, between Excellent. that young man and this PAR, we were able to gather information. Thank you very so much. Uh, for Chris Land, that's a good example. He says a young man. How young? Uh, <laughs> how old? I'm joking. He's the person. Now, Mary Silva, Professor Wachuku, take the floor. And that's the last contribution. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Pleasure. I'm the DAP of Godfrey Kwe University. Great Enugu. university in Enugu, yes. We have the Joint Directorate of Academic Planning and Quality Assurance. Uh -huh. And we have representatives from every program, every department. Those in the committee are those who are eligible to the post of Academic Planning Director. Hmm. So in that way, we are doing an in training of possible successors uh -huh. to the present DAP. Uh -huh. Then all our staff have uh, their just, just a bit, just so I don't forget, so Professor Salu is here. I, I really like that. Yes. You know, training, you can see Professor Larry is also, you know, excited about it. So the successor, you, you have a training program for who can succeed the yes. current DAP. So the person is just not brand new, the person gets into it. And uh, if the vice exactly. chancellor knows that, if a new vice chancellor comes, and wants to impose his black person or so, it becomes some, if it's a tradition. Yeah, we did that from, from the time AUC required every university to have internal quality assurance committee. Yes. So all those in the committee are eligible to the post of DAP Wonderful. so that through the years, they are learning the work of the DAP. Sure. It won't be a, a problem appointing a, a new person. Thank you so very much. People. That's a great... Uh, example contribution for godfrey okoye university in Ogo. now we've had it all from everywhere uh, I, i'm going to ask you know we're talking about challenges we're not going to ask i'm going to ask you to come here now professor salu uh, to come for one minute because we have eight more minutes for just one and a half minutes to tell us sir you know the people your people they have told us <laughs> what their challenges are so you come and tell us your own challenges, your challenges, yes. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, sir. The major challenge you can come close so that you can. Uh, the major challenge we have, you know, it's a very tall man, so <laughs> he, he, I can't. Okay, go on, let me talk about all this one. Go ahead, yes. Is that of data from yeah. the universities? And uh, even though we've been overcoming that challenge now, but uh, we, we have not reached the point we and we think we should reach. So, uh, we had a difficulty in getting data from the universities. Not all of them respond. Yeah, but I don't know. That was the challenge. How are you solving it? Because this one is a meeting of solution. Yes. Well, how we are, challenging, we are, we are solving it at the moment is uh, to keep dialoguing with the universities. Okay. We are in talk with them all the time. Sure. Send reminders all the time so that we don't leave uh, any gap in, in, in communicating to with them mm -hmm. or they need to submit their data yeah. on time. Thank you very much, sir. You know, you are the you are the general command, general officer commanding of, <laughs> <laughs> all these people. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, somebody has raised this, uh, Dr. Okori, Ma Okori. No, it's not going to work. I've asked, we are finished. So don't bother to raise your hand because we just have a few more minutes to close the session. You know our rules. We start at 2, 3 o'clock, and we are all done. So uh, we uh, have the... Uh, let me just find it and share it. Yes, the agenda for the day, which is uh, to uh, take some announcements from my end, and then we'll call on Dr. Vivian Ilaku to uh, give us our closing words and then close the session. A couple of announcements. One is that the management of Vic Bay, this institute, is exceedingly delighted. In fact, the, 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 the secretary, we are all very happy about the commitment that you people are showing. Uh, you see, you can, how do you get a vice chancellor to attend this very rigorous, uh, <laughs> very rigorous course? How do you get a DAP? You are all very busy people, but you have found the time to be part of this. So first announcement is appreciation. 
I know that we are just one week or so away to the end, so just 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 carry on. Now I, I know those who will score distinction. I know that I'm not gonna I'm gonna announce them now. There are 440. Uh, let's see now. Uh, excuse me. 440. 40, 418. At peak, we are 440 people in the room. I have information for all of you. All 448, 4, 448 people we end distinction. I tell you that we end distinction. Mm. <laughs> uh, Professor Kamor, uh, Kamoru Alim is uh, clapping for himself. Yes, because you know Alim. That's uh, A. You people who start from A distinction all, all the way down like that. Uh, number two is that the one major deliverable of this trade, the ES as requested of all of us, is to produce a manual, a manual for directorate of academic planning. All the things we have learned here, we have to write up like a textbook, a manual for the for a manual for directorate of academic planning. That manual will be like the core core course text for the next set in 2023 and beyond until it is revised. You are going to be receiving from me during the course of the week uh, a request for whoever. It's also optional. You know, this course is optional. And some people are laughing at you in your university. Eh, what are they doing? They will learn to, I'm sorry to use that word, but that's the correct word, regret that they're not participating in this. Because at the end of the day, this training that you have received, you are going to find use for it. Our mama professor Lani, is a professor of law, as is then about academic planning. He's going to come, she's going to find it useful, very, very useful in the near or distant future. Professor uh, Sheo Ado, former VC of Akalam, I, I don't know what his discipline is, maybe it's a medicine. You are in medicine, you are coming to a course in academic planning. You are going to be surprised when you find the need for this course. So, we are going to throw it open if you think you want to be part of contributing to the uh, to the manual that will be co-edited by Peter Okepokola and uh, 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 Professor Saliu, you have to, you then show in the case. And your name will be there as the author of a particular section or chapter and all of that. So that is- about you, but I personally enjoyed the presentations of today. I would like to thank Professor Ngozi Odu and Professor Boylan Lee at Monday for honoring our invitation and as well as sharing your experiences and knowledge with us. Sadly, we have come to the conclusion of today's meeting. Thank, thank you all for participating. Thank you all so very much. Bye -bye. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ovia. I can see it's exactly three o'clock. Hey, as we promised, we always like to fulfill our promises. So that's it. Enjoy the rest uh, of the week. Enjoy the day. You know, Professor Anyolaja, uh, sent us Valentine greetings from Botswana. Uh, he's still there. So we're sending back to you 205 million Nigerians. We're sending back to Botswana of about 2 million. We're overwhelming you with uh, uh, Valentine greetings. Uh, so take care, everybody, and uh, God bless us all. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.